Hi, good morning, Robert Medlin here. You know, there are times in your life when, when the pressures come and, and the confusion comes and you don't know exactly what to do, you don't feel saved, you don't feel like, like the Lord's going to rescue you, you don't feel like things are going to work out in your life and then things are just going to, uh, not just, just, just going to get worse and worse. Well, there are times like those the Lord wants to encourage you that, that uh, there's nothing that goes on in the universe that he's not aware of and that he's got a plan to deliver you and rescue you and uh, he wants us to just rely on that and trust in that when things get so overwhelming that we don't know what to do he wants us to just look to him and say you're my shepherd you take care of me it's like a lost sheep that doesn't know how to get home you know he he's coming after you he's going to take care of you he's going to he's going to set you back on the right path uh, he's going to deliver you uh, even uh, in everything that we do, he's he's got a plan to cause us to be overcomers. He wants us to uh, to stand by faith because by standing in faith, that's the greatest peace and rest. And Jesus invites us to come in and and partake of His rest and and come come to me, you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Jesus wants to give us rest, and the rest that He's given us is resting and trusting in His love, trusting in 
that he's going to take care of us, that he's in charge, that it's not about us. And you may feel like you're you're having measured up that you have disappointed the Lord, but he's saying, yeah, I've already paid for that. You know, I'm the only one that could endure the pressure. I'm the only one that could endure the pressure of the unjust, unfair treatment, the, the, the temptations of the devil. I'm the only one that could endure that. So uh, he wants us to, to, to resist the devil and to fight the good fight of faith, but to understand that, he, that his love for us is not measured by how we respond and how well we do and, and, and how, how close we come to, to being Christ-like. Uh, his love for us is just based on his, us receiving his love. When we receive his love, his love is poured out to us when we receive his love. That gives him the greatest joy. And that's just like a husband with a wife. When, when, a, when a wife receives her, a husband's love, that gives him great joy. And, and uh, the same way with a, with a wife. When a husband receives his wife's love and adoration, it gives the wife great joy. But if we're constantly questioning, I don't believe you love me, I don't, you know, you know and I don't measure up, I don't do this and don't do that, you know, uh, we're going to fail all the time. But Jesus wants us to keep our eyes on him and his love. And so, and I love the scripture in Romans 8 where it says, who's going to bring a charge against God's elect? It's God who justifies. God justifies you. What that means is God says you're righteous. He says in the court of law, he says Jesus paid for your sins. Your sins have been paid for. Justice has been satisfied. And so, uh, it's God who justifies. Justice has been satisfied for you. And so there's nothing restricting you, nothing blocking you from the love of Jesus, nothing blocking you from the care of Jesus. And who is it that, that, that just going to condemn you when Jesus is at the right hand of God saying, I paid for them. He's there testifying with his blood that he paid for you, that you're purchased with the blood of Jesus. And so there are times when you feel like you, you just want to just you start having a negative outlook towards yourself and a negative outlook towards your spirituality, your relationship with the Lord. But, but just get your eyes on Jesus. Nothing can separate you from his love. Nothing can separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate you. And so he wants you to just trust in his love and, and trust that, he's, that he loves you and cares for you. Nobody can snatch you. The scriptures say nobody can snatch you out of his hands. And so, you know, the, the, you may be under pressure. You may be under demonic pressure to try to uh, bring, bring you into condemnation, try to bring you into despair and depression. But it's not Jesus that's doing that. Jesus is there saying, come on, I love you. Come on, I love you. Come on, I'm going to take care of you. Come on, get your eyes on me now. Don't, don't get your eyes on what your brain is coming up with. The thoughts that are coming into your mind. Get your eyes on me. Just like when Peter, when 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 uh, Jesus was walking on the water, and, and Peter said, "Lord, let me if that's you," he said, "Let me come to you." You know, I'm sure he had. Uh, after all this event happened, I'm sure he said, "Why in the world did I ever say that?" You know, it was a stormy night; the wind was blowing, and here's Jesus walking on the water, and Peter, Peter says, "Lord, if that's you." Tell me to come to you. <laughs> what faith? And so Jesus said, come. And so Peter cl climbs out of the boat and starts walking on the water towards Jesus. Now that's amazing. That's amazing. But you know what? Uh, storm, the, the storm was making a loud noise. The water was, was, was blowing in his face. And everywhere around him, the waves were just boiling and rolling. And it's fearful. And he started getting his eyes on the winds and the waves, the scriptures tell us, and got his eyes off of Jesus, and he started to sink. And so when he started to sink, he said, Lord Jesus, save me. <laughs> Here's Peter. He was a fisherman. He knew how to swim, but he also knew that that boat was moving with the wind away from him, and there wasn't any way he was going to get back in the boat without Jesus saving him. And so when we start to sink, when we get our eyes on the circumstances, we just look to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, save me. But, you know, you've done the best you can. You've walked by faith. You've done everything you can. Maybe you maybe you just haven't walked by faith. Maybe you just got in a mess and 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 you're just you're just hanging out there with with nothing to support you, no hope, and you just look to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, save me. <laughs> and another scripture says, This poor man cried out to the Lord, and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his troubles. So 
uh, it's not about you. It's about us crying out to Jesus, trusting in Him, trusting in His love when things look like He don't, He doesn't love us, trusting in His love when it looks like uh, that He's not intervening in our life and helping us, trusting in His love. You know, the worst thing that can happen to us is that we just we just go to be with the Lord. You know, that's that's the. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing. You know, when a Christian graduates from this life, they just step over into the into eternity with Jesus. They don't go to they don't go to a holding tank or anything. They they've already seated with Jesus. They just step right over with Jesus into heaven. But but it's just trusting in the Lord that He's going to take care of you. He is going to take care of you. He's going to reach out His hand, that, and nothing can interfere with His purpose for your life. You're going to fulfill the number of days that He has ordained for you. And He said He said that uh, He's that the number of our years is seventy or eighty years, and even beyond that, He says. He says that, that that with long life I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation. I just read last night where there was a, a Jewish man that was 116 years old, the oldest man in the world, he was in the concentration camps in in uh, during World War II. So uh, he wasn't 116 because he didn't face pressure. Everybody around him was getting exterminated. So. Uh, with long life. So long life is, is based on what you determine it to be. If you think 70 or 80 years is long life, you say, well, praise the Lord. He's going to, with long life, he'll satisfy me and show me his salvation. And if and if 70 or 80 years isn't, isn't a long life and you would like to live longer, just say, well, you know, Lord, 90 years or 100 years, whatever. Uh, you, you decide. He's going to satisfy you. Whatever your desire is. If you're, if you're having a satisfied life and you want to live longer and you feel like you're being fruitful and and you're enjoying life and and uh, Jesus, you're growing in faith in Jesus. You know, you're not off somewhere totally neglecting him and not paying any attention to him. Uh, you know, then you're better off going to be with the Lord. But, but uh, just as long as you're staying close to the Lord and walking by faith, and then you just you just say, Lord, I'd like to live to be ninety. I'd like to live to be ninety-five or a hundred. And and Jesus said, Okay, I'll satisfy you with that. But then you've got a faith battle that you've got to stand on that scripture in Psalm ninety-one that says, uh, it starts out and says, I'll be with you in trouble. It said you will call upon me, and the way you call upon him as you say help me Jesus just like Peter did you will call upon me and I will answer you the promises in Psalm 91 he said I will deliver you and I will honor you and then he says with long life I will satisfy you and show you my salvation so uh, you determine what long life is Jesus wants to give you long life Jesus wants you to understand that he's pulling for you he's with you he's he's going to take care of you uh, he's going to reach out his hand just say help Lord Jesus he's going to reach out his hand he's going to take you and deliver you from from the from drowning he's not going to let you drown just like he didn't let Peter drown so uh, we just cry out to Jesus keep our eyes on Jesus and and he's not don't get your eyes off yourself you know it's so easy the devil runs around and, uh, like a roaring lion seeking whom he, may, whom he may devour and he's accusing people all the time you know look at you you've done this you've done that you know this is the reason all these bad things are happening to you God's not fair you know you haven't done anything but God's not fair the devil just lie to you all over the place but you just trust the Lord Lord nothing can snatch me out of your hands Lord you love me and nothing can snatch me out of your hands you justify me you say that I'm innocent Lord Jesus that you're that you're interceding for me at the right hand of God. Thank you, Lord, that I'm whatever trouble you're going through, Jesus is going to get, take you through it in flying colors. And so uh, that's what he wants us to do is live victoriously by faith. Sometimes the, we get to looking at the storms and we start sinking. We have to cry out to the Lord to save us. Uh, sometimes we, we just walk by faith and just have victory after victory uh, in, in every area of our life. But there are times when you're going to need to cry out to the Lord, say, Lord Jesus, I'm sinking, help me. And he's faithful and just, and he'll stretch forth his hand, and he'll He'll take you and and uh, and grab you and rescue you and save you and get you back in the boat. So the main thing is is to not, not to first keep your eyes on Jesus. Stay in the promises. Meditate on the promises. Keep your eyes on him. Meditate on his love, how much he loves you. He loves you. Nothing can separate you from his love. Nothing. And so God's not accusing you of anything. He's saying you're innocent because of your faith in Jesus. 
And so get your eyes off the things about yourself and what you do. Get your eyes on him and what he did. Lord, you paid for me. Lord, you paid for my healing. Lord, you paid for me to to, to have all of my needs met according to your riches and glory. You paid for it. You gave. You did it, Lord. You paid for me. And getting our eyes back on Jesus, Lord, you're faithful. Your faithfulness uh, stretches to the skies and endures forever. You're faithful. And you're, you're rescuing me. You always rescue me. And getting your eyes on Jesus and off of your circumstances, off of yourself, it's not some kind of a failure that you've had. It's getting your eyes on Jesus and saying, you saved me. You bought me. You bought all these promises for me. I believe it. You're, you're working for my good all the time. Thank you, Lord. I love you. Thank you for your love for me. Thank you, Lord. And encourage me, Lord. I need encouragement, Lord. I feel like I'm sinking. And he'll encourage you. So that's the way the Lord wants us to respond to the issues of life when things are, are not looking uh, uh, like we think they, they should or that there's real pressure coming against us. He said, just get your eyes on Jesus. Don't get your eyes on yourself. Get your eyes on Jesus and his faithfulness and his love for you. Nothing can separate you from his love. All the saints, everybody, all the men and women of God have gone through trials and, and circumstances where it looked like uh, things were over and that the Lord wasn't going to take care of them, but he took care of them one way or the other. So get your eyes on Jesus. He's your Savior. He is your Savior. He, is your, he loves you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. So uh, I, I, I hope that this encourages you, that, uh, that Jesus loves you. And, and get your eyes off yourself. Get your eyes on Him. He's just love. He's just love. He's, he's interceding for you. He's, he's right there for you. He's, he's encouraging you to take leaps of faith. Go ahead and take leaps of faith and trust me with, trust my promises. And, and when you fail, He's right there to grab your hand when you say, help me, Lord Jesus. Save me, Lord. I'm going to drown. I'm going to sink. He'll, he'll save you. Well, God bless you and have a wonderful day.